This is Miss Cross, first grade teacher at Rushmore Academy, an elite all-boys academy that serves as the setting for Wes Anderson's second feature film. Max Fisher, a 15-year-old student at Rushmore, just filled her lemonade glass, making perfect time. He's head over heels in love with Miss Cross. More than that, he's obsessed. Naively, arrogantly, filled with awkward pauses, infatuated. In this scene, Miss Cross, shyly, tries to set boundaries in her relationship with Max. Max, mm -hmm. can I ask you something? Sure. Has it ever crossed your mind that you're far too young for me? Throughout the scene, Max is trying to maintain his arrogant and mature facade while he processes her rejection. He keeps Peter Travers' quote, unearned superiority, and Janet Maslin's quote, natural authority throughout the scene. While calmly walking away from the camera and Miss Cross, he implies that he's pressuring Miss Cross, even though he clearly wasn't. Trying to gain and maintain that control, he interrupts Miss Cross's response by sharpening his pencil. And, um, the, the truth is neither one of us had the slightest idea where this relationship is going. In the shot reverse shot, as the conversation continues, the camera stays close up to a still whispering cross, exemplifying her sincerity and vulnerability, and stays in the medium shot for a louder Max, keeping his front of maturity with both emotional and physical distance. I understand. You're not attracted to me. Say la vie. The first close up of Max comes as a bit of a surprise. Just like Miss Cross, the close up is tied to his sincerity. Say so. Look, all I'm getting at is that, that I've never met anyone like you. When the camera cuts to a close-up of Max again, it becomes evident that Max and Miss Cross are sharing a much more sincere and intimate moment than either have anticipated. Earlier in the film, Max brags about swapping compliments with the attractive mother of a classmate. So even though Mrs. Cross's objective was to define the relationship and shut down any advances from Max, she ultimately fails. At the end, Max, looking very short next to Miss Cross, shakes her hand. Max walks away proudly having touched her hand, and Cross walks away even more confused than she was when she sat down. 